Welcome back everyone. The next topic we're going to talk about is the service value system. And the service value system is the whole of ITIL really. It's everything you need to create, run, manage, govern IT services. Again, I'll just take my face away from the front of the slides so we can see the slides. So at the very highest level, this is an image that shows everything you need to do to deliver IT service management, to deliver valuable services, to work with your customers to co-create value in the form of products and services. Some of these things we've already looked at, some of them we'll be looking at later today or tomorrow. Outside of the service value system, you can see opportunity and demand coming in and value being created coming out. The components of the value system itself are the guiding principles, which we've already looked at, governance that we've already looked at, a service value chain, which we're going to be looking at in about five minutes, the 34 ITIL practices, which we'll be looking at tomorrow, but I'll be mentioning in various ways during the afternoon today, and continual improvement. Continual improvement is a bit odd because it comes up at multiple different places in the ITIL framework. At the level of the service value system, we see continual improvement here. And the, this is, if you like, the culture, the attitudes, the organizational approach to continual improvement. There is a continual improvement practice, which looks at, as all practices do, the four dimensions. It looks at the process, processes, and it looks at all of the resources you need to do continual improvement. And finally, the service value chain consists of activities that are in various value streams, and one of those activities is improve. And at that stage, it's just a thing to do. So the key inputs to the service value system, as I said, are opportunity and demand. Demand is when a customer or a user says they want something. A user might phone and say they have an incident. A customer might speak to their account manager and say they need a new service. <coughs> Opportunity might be that your board of management have recognized a new market they want to get into, or that somebody has recognized an improvement opportunity that could make your services work better. The service value system itself has components that are highlighted in this bulleted list. Guiding principles. We know those recommendations that can guide an organization in all circumstances, regardless of changes in its goals, strategies, type of work, or management structure. Uh, the seven guiding principles, and they are absolutely what you need to know about if you want to adopt ITIL. Then there's governance, the means by which an organization is directed and controlled, which consists, as we know, of evaluate, direct, and monitor, understand and make decisions about what you want to be, what you want to do, direct management so that they know what is expected of them, and monitor to make sure that you're getting what you expected and to close the feedback loop. The service value chain we'll be looking at on the next few slides, but it's a set of interconnected activities that an organization performs to deliver a valuable product or service to its consumers and to facilitate value realization. The service value chain is, I like to think of it as archetypal activities. It's a specific set of six activities that work together and the value streams are laid on top of it. I'll show you how that works shortly. Practices. There are 34 ITIL practices ranging from business-like practices like relationship management and organizational change management um, some that have come from a traditional IT service management background, like availability management and capacity management and incident and problem management. And some which came from a technology background, like software development or infrastructure management. And between those 34 practices, they describe 
all of the resources you need and each practice organizes a set of resources that are needed I like to think of the practices as being capabilities there's something you can do so if we take for example the continual improvement practice you don't have to have a continual improvement team to do it you don't even have to have a continual improvement manager to do it but you do have to have organizations and people set up to do it and you have to have information and technology there thank you for attending this ITIL4 Foundation e-learning course which is a preparation course for candidates taking the official Axelos ITIL4 Foundation exam which is conducted by PeopleCert one World Training is an authorized training provider for all modules of ITIL4, PRINCE2, PRINCE2 Agile, PeopleCert Scrum Master, PeopleCert DevOps, and Service Desk Institute courses, including Service Desk Analyst V8 and Service Desk Manager V8, and many other courses. All courses offered by One World Training are available via e-learning and live online. For enrollment queries, you can contact info info at oneworldtraining.com as you see on this slide if you've got any questions about anything you have learned on this training course then you can email one world training using that same email address as shown on this slide i hope that you've enjoyed this course and i'd like to wish you good luck in your ITIL 4 foundation exam thank you and goodbye